This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi there, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my Online Guitar Academy. I'm so delighted to have you joining me. In this quick answer episode, I'm going to talk about how to change the strings on a nylon string guitar. So changing the strings is actually a pretty easy maintenance thing to do. It's something that has to happen pretty frequently. The string companies will tell us at least every six months, and of course if we're playing very often, we have to change them much more frequently. But as soon as those strings start losing their elasticity, which happens after about six months, it'll start pulling harder on the instrument and you can't have instrument damage. But uh, most of us that are playing the guitar very frequently, the strings are going to sort of get dull and, and uh, sound worn out after a little while and we like that new fresh sound, breathes new life into the instrument when we have new strings. So we can save some money doing this ourselves and it's kind of fun actually to be able to do a little bit of maintenance on our own instruments. So this one, this video is about changing the strings on a nylon string which has its own little quirks. If you're needing to change the strings on a steel string acoustic or an electric guitar you can check out my videos on changing strings on the steel string, string acoustic or an electric guitar but we'll just go ahead and get started. A couple things that I always have on hand. A string winder. So this one's made by Diadario, but this just helps. You don't have to do all the winding with the tuning keys or the turning of the tuning keys to get the strings tightened up by hand. So I always have a string winder on hand, and I usually have a tuner on hand as well. This is just a little FT004. It's a little Fender 1 clips on the end. So as we're tuning up the strings it helps to have something to help us do that and then of course you need the new set of strings with this particular nylon string guitar I'm just putting the J45's EJ45 from Diadario just hard tension sort of a standard string nothing too exciting on this particular instrument okay so I go ahead and get started the first thing to do is to take off a string and I mention a string because we really don't want to take off more than one uh, or two at a time um, unless we need to do repairs so there's a lot of pounds of pressure that pulls on from the coming through the bridge over that neck and it just pulls on the neck to release all that pressure at once and then tighten it up anyway we can have some issues that can happen with the instrument when we're doing that so we avoid doing that a lot of instruments now are built with truss rods or extra uh, sort of support through the neck to try and help there from being any change in the neck and so on if something if we need to take them off or things like that but I still usually don't risk it unless we got to do maintenance on on the saddle or the nut or something that requires all those strings to come off so we'll just go ahead and get started my personal pref preference and you're gonna kinda get some of those tricks is to start from the inside two strings and just move outwards. So I usually start with string three or four. The strings are numbered from the high E string, string number one. Um, wow, that's out of tune, so good thing we're changing these up. But string one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I usually start with strings three and four. So E, B, G, D, A, E. So I start with G and B. And I've got the guitars upside down here, but that's the way it is. And so using my string winder, I just go ahead and loosen it and I usually uh, listen to it as I loosen it to make sure it's going in the right direction and I loosen it all the way now with this particular guitar loosening them comes from the underside of the backside here so it takes just a moment but I go ahead and loosen that up once I get all the way loosened from the end there I can go ahead and untie it if it's tied. I usually tie them at the end when I'm doing them so that it helps from these strings stripping or slipping I should say not stripping but I I also I, I didn't mention this but sometimes I usually have needle nose pliers on hand too which can help with with getting these strings strings off the end as we pull it out of the end there then I come back to the bridge and it's usually tied in a knot. If you have a, if you have a type of nylon string that doesn't have a tie at the end but it has a ball instead at the end then you can really do it the same way that steel string guitars are done. But most nylon string guitars we have to tie a knot. There's a hole that runs through the bridge and we tie a knot there. So I undo that knot, pull 
the string through just like that and then I'm ready to put the next one on. Okay, so I have the new G string here. The first thing I have to do is tie the knot for this string back to the bridge. And so I'm going to flip the guitar around a little bit here and see if I can show this. So I take one end of the nylon string and I'm going to feed it through the hole in the bridge from this, the side that's towards the neck. I'm going to feed it through and have it pop out sort of towards the tail end so it's, it's running through that hole. Some guitars will have 12 holes. Um, that's kind of a newer style, maybe newer, but a different way of tying. You could check out a video, I'm sure, on, on a on a str uh, nylon string that has the 12 hole, but this one has a 6 hole, so we tie the knot. So basically once we've run through, we're going to take that the end and come back and come underneath the rest of the string. And then as we come through, it's just like tying a slip knot. Um, we just come through, so it just looks just like a slip knot there. And I that's all I've done is tie basically a slip knot and we could tighten it. Now what I usually do, especially with these these higher strings, so like on the G and the B, is to come around two or three times. But I'm gonna have a little bit of excess, maybe a centimeter or two, maybe a whole inch. And basically I just take and tighten. So I pull with my left hand as I hold that little bit of excess there in place. And I make sure that it's a nice taut tight knot and that's all there is to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to the tuning keys. And there's a hole there's a hole in the tuning key. What I want to make sure and I just move that hole so it's facing sort of up, but I want to make sure that it goes through the top part first um, that it 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 winds down over and then pulls through the back so just like that and then as this tightens I need to make sure that it pulls the string forward um, and tucks it up over tucks it up over the tuning post instead of instead of what would come down there so it's going to come over now before I really start tightening that I will do a couple things to help make sure that this doesn't doesn't slip so if the hole has enough space, it doesn't always, depends on your guitar, but if it has enough space, I will wrap it around the underneath part and fill it, fill it back through again. So it's actually going through twice. And then I, and then I will sort of pull it tight with a little bit of excess. And then I'm gonna let that excess that's sitting on my guitar sitting behind it, I'm going to let it wrap around um, and get and get wrapped over the top of. Sometimes I'll tie a knot, it just kind of depends, and some people changing it, the strings will tie a knot. Once I've got that there, then I'm going to go ahead and tighten the string. And like I said, it needs to pull forward, so it needs to pull this way. Now my goal with this particular string is to get it so it's going to come in towards this part of the headstock. It doesn't need to touch it, but it's going to need to end up there and then run through the nut. With, a, with this much excess, and some will cut off nylon strings, I don't usually cut them off, I usually wrap it all around and just help it be tight. But what I will do is I'll usually start this off going towards this part, more towards the tuning key, and then wrap it back so it's going to get a little bit there. But I just go ahead and tighten it and let it tighten. And I'm kind of working blind here showing you how, how this goes. But I, I tighten it a little bit on that side, and then I'll bring it back and have it tighten more on the inside. So I just try and time it in a way that will allow it to pull across and get get all of that nice and tight so that I can have it feed nicely into the into the nut there. So let's go ahead and tighten it. Okay, so as I've sort of got this started winding here, it's it's started on that side and then I've got it pushing towards this inside so you can see how that string just nicely comes to meet the groove in the nut for that particular one. And then as I go 
Um, I've got it tight enough now that I'll just keep tightening it up to tuning. And because I can't quite see what I'm doing, uh, sometimes I'll do it by ear, but I'm going to go ahead and use my, my, my uh, tuner to help me see where I'm going. And I want to tune this up to a G. It takes a little bit of a, a moment to get it there. I usually tune it a little bit past, which I've got. Now on strings take forever to, to uh, stretch out. So I usually then pull on it a little bit, just like so. Pull on it and then tighten it up, tighten it up again. And sometimes I'll go a little bit past and just let it sort of stretch out. Okay, so once I've gotten that one done, I can move on to the next one. Because my tendency is to go from inside to out, I'm going to go ahead and do the D string next. So I usually pluck it and then I'm just loosening. I'm holding it up so you can see, but I just go ahead and loosen with that the winder. Okay, and so like I've done with the G string, once I have gotten it loosened up with this D string, I just pull it off. These ones sometimes come off a little easier. Then I come untie that knot back at the bridge, pull it off, and it's, it's easy, as easy as that. Then I'm going to take the new D string in this case, and we'll, we'll stick it on here. Again, starting with tying the knot back by the bridge. Okay, so in tying the knot, we'll do this angle this time, try and tip the guitar up a little bit so you can maybe see. I, I put it through the hole, so I'm starting on the sound hole side, pulls through towards the tail side. I'm going to come around um, underneath the string. I'm doing it backwards because it looks upside down, but I'm going to come around underneath the string and tie what would be like a slip knot. And sometimes even with these ones, I'll do an extra time. Don't have to, but I'll, but I but I could. I could wrap it around, wrap it around twice. So sometimes I'll do that. I'm gonna do that in this case. So I just wrap it around an extra time. Then I come hold the excess and pull that knot, pull that knot tight until it becomes a nice taut, nice tight knot, um, and it can just sit there fairly tight. Sometimes it won't entirely sit there unless you keep a little bit of pressure on it. I come up and I stick through the hole um, in the tuning in the tuning key. So it's going to pull through just like so. Just like I've done on the pass, I'm going to stick and come underneath. So I've wrapped around that post. And if I can, if the hole's big enough, I feed it back through again and leave just a little bit sticking out. And then I go ahead and pull that tight and, and uh, create a, a little bit of a, a knot there. Then it's time to, to wrap the strings. Just like with the other one, I want to sort of end up so it goes nicely to its groove in the nut. So I'm just going to go ahead and start wrapping that and aiming towards that. So I'm going to start tightening it. I tighten so that it's tightening and goes up and over this way. Up and over this way. <laughs> so I'm getting it tightened here. It comes around and heads to that nut. Just you get a nice line there and I can keep tightening it. I started off by tightening a little bit to the other side and then crossed over and I made sure that that excess was getting getting tightened right underneath. Right underneath it. And then I go ahead and tune it up. Doing it a little upside, upside down here, but I go ahead. It's at a B, and I need it at a D. Once I get it there, then just like before, I kind of go ahead and pull on it, make sure everything's in good order and staying, staying like it is, and then I'll retune it and let it sit. I could do that a couple times. Sometimes I'll tune them to be a little sharp because it's, it's going to take a little while for the nylon strings to stretch out. So now I've done strings three and four. I'm going to come back and this time 
I'm going to loosen the B string and we'll do that one next. Once I've got that string loose enough, then I can go ahead and just pull it. And that's usually with, especially these top strings, these higher strings, I might need to pull the needle nose pliers to get it to come out, especially if I've tied it in a knot the way I was showing that I've tied it in a knot. Then I come back here and I just undo this knot. To do that, I just pull on the part that's wrapped around, loosen it up, pull it through, and we are we're all done with that one. Okay, so then on to the, the B string. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you again how we tie that knot. So I'll do it from from uh, this angle this time. Get a get a little little bit of the different angles. So what I'm doing here is I'm going down from the sound hole side. I'm going to find that little hole and pull it through. So I've got it pulled through. And I come back and I'm going to tie a slip knot. So I'm going to come underneath the string. I wrap around and I come through and I would just come back through. And it would just be as simple as that. But I usually will wrap it around another time. And sometimes on these really high, the high couple strings, I'll even go a second extra time. So this time I've wrapped it around that string three times. I'm holding it, the excess, against the back of the bridge with my finger, or I've done it with my thumb, depending on my angle. And then I'm just gonna pull that tight with my other hand. And it should stay pretty good if I if I let the slack go. So it's it's staying pretty good. I've got it, and I'm gonna feed it up and into the hole on the guitar. Or on the tuning tuning key of the guitar. So I've got that hole. I wanna just feed it right through. And then I come around, so what I call underneath. These nylon strings are they're really a little bit a little bit spongy, slinky. -y. So I come through, I come underneath, I come through, and then it goes back through the hole. So just like so. Oops, tied a knot. I I I wrapped the other string around with it, but it, the G string. So I go back through that hole, and I could tie a little tie a little knot back there but I'm going to at least go through that hole if I can do it twice. And usually with these higher strings I can. I pull it tight and then I start tightening. Now in this case I want to come and try and meet that hole in the nut. So I want that to line up as best I can and I can just kind of wrap around the post that I, how I want that to happen. I've got a little bit more excess here than I really want once I take a look. So I've fed that off just to have a little bit and then I start going to town on tightening. And again, it should wrap forward around the post and come back. Not wrap on the underside. So wrap on the top side first is another way to say that. So to get that tightened up, start tuning that pitch. Looking for B. there. And we are there. I'm going to go ahead and stretch that string, pull on it a little bit. These you can pull on harder and kind of need to pull on harder than a steel string. Because they really have a lot of give. They're really stretchy that way. So I've tuned it past a little bit, but I'm going to let it stretch out. And I'll go ahead and do the fifth string next, since I like to move from inside to out, but it doesn't really matter, but I just like the balance of that. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen that fifth string. Once I've got it loose enough that I can pull it, I just go ahead and use my needle nose if I need to pull the little, the little knot that I had created when I strung it last. And untie it there. Once I've got that so it's un, undone, then I can come around and pull this knot. I I just pull up a little bit under from underneath the knot part, pull the other string through, and pull it through. 
Okay, and then we're ready to do the new fifth string. So on the new fifth string, I'm going to demonstrate how to tie that knot again because that's really the, the trickiest part as far as the difference between these nylon strings and the other silk string guitars is tying the knot and also just the fact that these strings stretch out so slow. But I'm going to go ahead and put that string down through the hole so I've got, got some there. I'm going to tie that knot so I come up and around and then back through just like I was going to tie a slip knot. On these lower strings I usually only go once, sometimes I go twice, but on this particular one I've got a little excess so, so I'll go ahead and, and go twice. But uh, once once is a lot of times fine. These ones that are, are wound here at the bottom, they're a little tight on each other. Uh, these ones that aren't wound are slippery and so the, wi the winding or the wound strings um, they hold a little easier. Okay, so I do that knot just like before. I'm gonna run it up and just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and feed the string through. And then if it still will, sometimes it won't on these thicker strings, but if it still will, then I'm gonna go ahead and feed it back through the hole just like I've done before. So I've I'm feeding it through a second time and leaving a little bit of excess. By a little bit of excess, I usually leave a centimeter to a centimeter and a half. So sticking out, I just have a little bit of excess. And I'm gonna aim for the nut so I sort of see where I'm aiming for and then I start wrapping that post, wrapping that string around that post by tightening so I can get, so I can get it there. As I get it tightened up to where I can hear it, and I start tuning. I'm looking for an A pitch on this one. And there it is. Same as before, I go ahead and tug on that string, help it stretch out. These lower ones will stretch quicker than the higher ones. And I leave it, I'm leaving this just a little bit sharp so it has more time to stretch out. Okay, so then we're down to the last two strings. So the first thing I do, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen that first string or that high string and get it all loose. Once I've got it loose enough, then I can go in there and just pull that knot, untie it, and be good to go. These nylon strings with these head socks are a little bit a little bit trickier sometimes. But I'm gonna come back, I'll show it this way again, but I pop, I'm just gonna pop pop that knot part right up and then pull it out and then I'm ready to put in the the new first string. So in tying that knot I'm going to feed it down through the hole like I've done, come around underneath like I've done. Now with this one, I always wrap. On this high string, I always wrap it at least three times. So one, two, three. And then I hold the excess and pull it tight. Now in this case, the way it pulled tight, I ended up with extra excess and I can just kind of play with it. I could wrap it an extra time. That's what I'm. That's what I'm gonna do here. Just wrap it an extra time. Okay, so I wrapped it a couple extra times. I'm just gonna let there be a little more excess sticking out. You just play with it until you're until you're okay with it. Hold it tight. And we come back up, and I'm gonna feed it through the top. This time. The nut it's going to line up through is going to be a little bit further over, so of course that changes kind of where my goal is on lining it up. But I go over the top, come through, and still I'm going to go through an extra time, have an extra centimeter or to a centimeter and a half. 
There is excess, and then I'm going to start tightening, aiming for hitting that nut right where I, right where I want it. As I get that tight, I can start tuning. I'm looking for an E pitch. Almost there. Went a little far, I went up to like F flat or E sharp. <laughs> like in between F, F and E. But I'm gonna pull on it. And I go ahead and tune that pitch again. And I can do that tug and pull a couple times. But I've got that one, one string left. I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening the sixth string. To get it loose enough, and just like before, I can come around and reach in and untie that knot. Now with this particular string, uh, a lot of times it won't fit through the hole twice, so I've tie tied an actual like slip knot to try and hold it. So you just you find a way to help it so that it won't slip, um, and that I I just tie a slip knot instead of actually feeding it back through. I'm going to go back here, pop the knot, put the pressure on it I should say, and pull it through. Once I've got that one done, then I get to do the last string, tie the knot on this one. So the sixth string is a little bit, because it's a little bit thicker, it uh, it's going to function a little differently you could say as you do it, but the same principle applies. Um, you go through the hole. I'm going to come wrap around from behind. I'm going to feed it through so I've got a little slip knot. And with this one I usually just do one, but if for some reason I needed to I could do two. I'm going to hold the excess next to the end of the bridge and pull it tight. And as I get it tight, once I've got it tight, it should hold pretty good. Come up and I'll go through the hole on top here. I'm pushing the other one aside a little bit because there isn't room. Uh, it's sitting right over top the hole. But I come up under just like before and I have my, my excess there. And this time what I do, because it's not going to fit back through the hole, is I tie a little slip knot. Um, will work if I, if I can get it to tie a slip knot. Sometimes you end up with a little more excess here than you want, or I'll wrap it back around, but I make sure that it's sort of tied in a way. Sometimes I'll feed excess back through, and then I'm just going to make sure that this wraps around those extra, those extra parts as I start tightening it. And I want to again line up with the hole that I'm aiming for. So it's like it's tight enough that I can start tuning it. I start doing that. I'm looking for a low E pitch. <laughs> I went a little bit far. It was ringing off the thing. But once I've got it there, I'm going to go ahead and stretch. Stretch that string. And it's actually still a little sharp. So once I've sort of got it, uh, all those strings set, and everything is staying. Then I just go ahead and do some playing. As you can see, it's way out of tune. So with those strings stretched, I go ahead and get it tuned up. The amount of time they've sat here. Get it in tune. And I play on it. And I get playing and I tug on those strings some more and tune it and play it and 
strum and pluck on those strings and then stretch them some more. Get them nice and stretched out. Try and get it going. As I'm pulling on them, if I'm pulling on them and they're not slipping, then I know I've got a good knot here. And we're wrapped around well. Sometimes they just need to adjust a little bit. But I pull and I retune and play and eventually we, we get it there. So nylon strings take a little while to stretch out. That's part of their annoyance. The other thing I'll often do after changing the strings is polish or clean the guitar. So there's different cleaners and polishes depending on the finish you have on your guitar that you can clean and polish it up. Keep it nice and clean. It's good to wipe them down every time after you play really to get the oils off because the oils from our hands in playing. You can check out my other quick answer video on maintenance tips for other ways to take care of the guitar. I hope this helps. I hope you're having fun playing the guitar and I hope to see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.